Welcome to Scare Rock RC. All right. So it's been a minute since I posted a video because I've been doing nothing but RC four wheel drive trail finder two. Um, <laughs> we got UST coming up in just a week, one week from today. I will be in Williston, Florida, which I only live about two hours from there. So that works out. We're going to have some fun out there, but this is a beginner video series. Video number two, we're going to talk about brushed motors. So, what do we need to know about brush motors? Now, let's take a look here. So, we got the TF2 here, and we have a brush motor attached to it. So, when you're talking about a brush motor, you know, a lot of people think, man, why don't you just go brushless? Let's go brushless. Do brushless. I agree for a lot of things. However, crawlers, brushed motors are a great option for that. And let me tell you why. Not only is the cost down, okay, well, Hobbywing, thank you, Fusion SE, about the same price as this system, and it's brushless, but we're not going to talk about that. Let's talk about cost and features. So, this is a brush system from Hobbywing. Uh, this is the new 1080 G2 um, combo with the 11 turn 5 slot 555 can. Uh, this came in about the same price as the Fusion SE. However, this ESC here has a lot more tunability and avail uh, tunability into it. And, uh, you know, among that is an 8.4 volt BEC, which a lot of people really like to run your servos. Um, but we're talking about brush motors, so let's get to the brushed motor, which is this guy here. So... What are we looking for when we're talking about brush motors? Now, well, simple enough. You know, 11 turns, 5 slots, and can size. Pretty basic. Um, the slots are the amount of... Uh, as part of the uh, armature, I'm actually going to show a video. Or I'm going to switch to a picture before we talk about the guts of this thing. I'm just going to switch to a picture. Because I don't have a motor taken apart right now. I don't have one that I uh, would want to take apart um, I mean I guess I could take this one apart but we'll use a picture it's the same thing um, so let's not talk about slots yet let's talk about turns because that'll be a little bit easier 11 turn what does that mean that's how much copper winding is wrapped around each slot of the armature okay it all hand in hand I guess anyway so 11 turn the lower the number of turns the more speed the motor produces it's as fast as, as you know fast as the motor goes um you have three slot five slot very common um so a three slot 11 turn will actually be faster than a five slot 11 turn and i'm going to show you why when i pull that picture up um because even though you only have 11 turn worth of copper around the armature um if three is less than five so you have five slots, that's 11 turns out to each of those five slots. So that's still more copper and more torque produced. Um, the lower that number, the faster the motor goes inherently. Um, the higher the number, the more torque that motor is going to produce, but less speed. So with an 11 turn five slot, that's equivalent to say 28, 30-ish turn. Uh, you could actually do math, but I don't want to. Sorry, um, about 28, 30 turn roughly on a three slot, which is going to be a lot more torque, a lot slower of a motor, which is equivalent to what we have here. Um, the reasoning I did choose the brush motor for the TF2 here is simply because it has this. That's a two speed transmission. Um, that two speed allows a little bit more controllability. In second gear, this thing flies. In first gear, it slow crawls so good. And I think a brushless system might have been a little on the too much side. Um, especially in second gear, this thing would just fly. And it is not a race car. This is a TF2. This is a leaf sprung trail truck. It is, it is not designed for that. So, real quick here. I'm going to switch to the picture so you can get a little bit of a better understanding of what is inside this guy here. Picture. I got my little editor out here. So this is what we're looking at. So you can see in this picture, we have the armature, uh, the commutator, here's your terminals, and then your brushes, 
windings, the turns, and your stator magnets. So what the armature is, this is what we're talking about. So this portion here where it's kind of like that, um, each one of those is a slot. So my motor here, this five slot, has five of those around the rotor portion, which this entire center assembly here, uh, the, this whole center assembly here, that is the um, that is the rotor. That's your rotor assembly. That is what turns. Um, let's get rid of those. And uh, they turn in relation to the stator magnets. Um, when you energize here and here, this is your positive, negative, that can be reversed. I'll show more on the actual motor. Um, it energizes these brushes here and here against the commutator. And that is what is going to actually produce that electromagnetic field, which then makes the uh, motor turn. Uh, basically it. These windings right here, you know, these guy, all this here is your turns. So the less, the lower the number, the less copper is here. Um, the higher the number, the more copper and the more torque is produced. So that's basically an electric motor, a DC brushed motor right here. Brushed DC motor. Um, so these magnets, stator magnets, as it is here, um, are lined inside of the can, which is not visible in this particular illustration. Um, so when you energize this, that creates an electromagnetic field between the armature and the stator, which is the magnets on the inside of the can. And that causes, depending on your polarity here or here, which you can, you know, reverse those if you wanted to, um, determines which way the motor turns. Um, so that's it. That's all that there is to it. Um, so keep this picture in your mind and, uh, you know, we'll go back to the motor itself and I'll kind of explain a few more things. All right, now we're back to the motor. Um, I'm scoot up here. So, you know, we kind of went over the internals and what's inside there. Um, now, I wanted to explain a little bit. I was thinking about that. Um, why does the more copper that's in there, the more windings, the more wire, the more turns, cause it to be less fast, you know, less speed? Well, it's because of resistance. Resistance will increase. Um, the more windings we put in here, that's more copper for electricity to travel through, which creates more resistance. That's simply all that it is. It's ohms. You know, you measured it in ohms. That's your resistance of the motor. Um, so, you know, that that's kind of the guts of the motor. And that's also why, you know, less turns is faster. Is that, that, that energy has a more direct path with less turns than it does with more turns. That's all it is. Um, and as you can see here, you know, like I said, you can just, if your motor's turning the wrong way, you can just re reverse, reverse the polarity. It's that simple. Um, so like I said, you know, I got yellow to blue and you know, blue to yellow here. It's, you just flip it around if it's turning the wrong way. Um, there's other ways you can do it. Um, you can turn the end bell all the way around. You can program in the ESC. Uh, this one doesn't have uh, motor rotation, by the way, uh, it does not have that. So, um, so let's look in, you know, at the front of this motor. So what do we have here? What's all this stuff? And it's quite simple, honestly. It's just a spring. This spring uh, applies a slight bit of pressure to the to the brush that's in here. That's a carbon brush. That brush, as you saw in the illustration, contacts the commu commutator. There we go, um, and makes the the spinny spin. <laughs> Layman's terms there. Um, so you have, you know, like here. That's you know black, so that's that's negative um and then over here if we can creep up in here that one's red if you can see it um but like i said that don't matter that you can flippy flop them all you want it don't it, it you know this motor's not going to care um now timing let's look at timing this one does have timing this is a rebuildable style motor uh meaning you can actually take this apart uh, you can put a whole new rotor assembly in it you know if you're really good with electric motors you can 
unwind it. You can add turns. You can do anything you wanted in this particular instance. Um, the main thing you're going to go with a rebuildable motor is you're going to change the brushes, which you pop that spring off. They slide right out. Um, and the bearings. So you can actually refresh your motor. You can get new brushes. You can get new bearings on both end, you know, the end bell and then the can up here. Replace your bearings. You got a fresh new motor ready to rock and roll. Um, you know, if you have wear on the inside, that's a different story. But uh, let's talk about timing real quick. Timing, uh, similar, I guess, to an internal combustion engine. Uh, if you know anything about ignition timing on those, uh, you have advanced timing and retarded timing, um, and that all will change the operation of that that internal combustion engine depending on you know what you're going to do you're going to you know if you want more advanced timing you want more retarded timing if you got boost on it you know you got like a you know turbo supercharger force induction whatever you're doing with that engine you can all adjust that timing for whatever and that's the same thing with a brush motor just a little bit more simpler honestly um because say the motor is where are we going let's see oh, jesus this thing's got such a break on it Let's see, eh, eh. it's turning that way to go forward, right? So you would actually turn, you would loosen the screws. There's two screws, Did you? one there, and then there's one down here, can't really see it. And then you would uh, turn this opposing the motor rotation. So if it's, you know, like I said, going that way, going that way, you're gonna turn this, this way. Um, and that's gonna increase the motor speed a little bit. Um, six to 12 degrees is kind of where you want to be on a crawler. Uh, you could max it out if you want a lot of speed, whatever. I mean, that's kind of on you. Uh, this particular motor is marked to go up to 20 degrees. And the only reason it has negative and positive is just the, uh, just the, uh, 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 rotation of the motor. So if you go with the rotation of the motor, so instead of turning it this way, we turn it this way, that would actually slow the motor down. Um, Consequently, it will actually increase reverse speed. So if you back up a lot, I guess if you like to drive in reverse, maybe, um, you could actually turn it the other way and it would go faster in reverse. Uh, I don't think of any situation where I would actually use that. Um, but if you wanted to, um, it's up to you. Uh, if you wanted to drive it like a forklift where it steers at the rear, I mean, you know, that's, that's on you. Um, but normally you're going to turn that opposing the rotation of the shaft, and you're gonna give yourself a little more wheel speed. This particular setup is great on zero. I'm not messing with it. I will mess with it, 100%. Gonna happen, probably. Um, just to see how fast I can actually make this go. Um, but on 2S, this thing is is nuts fast um, in second gear. So, um, with all that said, that's your brushed motor. Um, they're very simple. Uh, brushless motors, arguably simpler. I, I maybe I mean we'll get into brush motors. I actually have one of those. I have an old uh, Arma BLX that I can take apart, and we can show you um, what's inside that. Um, but as far as a brushed motor, um, that's it. There it is. That's all there is to this guy. Nothing too special. Nothing too crazy. It's a it's a DC motor, um, meaning DC is direct current, which means you know when you plug your battery in, you have positive negative. It goes positive negative positive negative. That's it. Alternating current. Uh, that's a whole different story. That's what your house has. Um, and that is that is a uh, different type of electricity that we don't use in RC cars. We don't use in real cars. Um, and I'm not going to talk about it because it doesn't matter to the you know, RC. So with all that said, uh, I hope this really kind of helped with um, understanding a brushed motor and what the turns mean, what the slots mean. Um, you know, this is obviously the can inside here is your, your stator magnets. Now stator, a lot of people can get that confused stator. That's not the spinny part. That's the armature, the stator stationary, stator stationary, stationary. That, that can doesn't move. Um, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, a week from today, I'm going to be at UST. Maybe I'll see you there. Um, keep an eye out for me. Just look for, you know, this, this body. It's not done yet. But that, that license plate, yep, you can tell with that license plate and that that CB antenna. It's from Twisted Tree RC, by the way. Um, I'll actually tag them uh, on a post about the little boingy antenna there. Um, really cool thing. Anyway, uh, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Super Bowl Sunday tomorrow if you're uh, 
if you're uh, watching, um, I'm a Patriots fan, but e go Eagles, you know, fly Eagles fly. I'm going to go with them. So <laughs> anyway, y'all have a great day. Hope to see you at UST. If not, like, comment, drop a comment in the description or in the uh, comments below. I'm getting tongue twisted. Let me know what you want to see. If I missed anything, what, you, you know, did I do a good job? If I didn't, let me know. Let me know what I can improve on. You know, we're trying to build this channel. We're trying to get somewhere here. Um, so let me know what you want to see, what kind of builds you want to see. We got a whole year of cool stuff to do. With that said, hope you enjoy the beginner series. Hope you enjoy the brush motor and, uh, have a fantastic day. <laughs> Take it easy guys.